plastic bag weaving. So this is the first video that um, someone has actually asked me to do. So I'm going to try to share this as simply as possible, kind of cooking show style. Um, Teresa, what was, how would somebody find that video that we learned this from, that you learned it from? Uh, if you look up plastic bag mat on YouTube, it will probably come up with a, like an older lady and her video. Yeah, so I want to give credit to where we learned it. Um, I don't want to just co-opt her audience. So if you have any trouble with what I'm teaching, check out her video. Because like I said, we learned it from her, so she's got something going for her. Teresa actually taught me. I got really inspired by it, and I took off with this. So, cooking show style. All right. So I go in the recycling bins in front of Walmarts, grocery stores. You get all kinds of colors and patterns. And basically, I will get the bags. I will divide them up by color and stick them inside one bag so all my whites are inside here and then I stick them inside of a bigger bag so often this is completely full like I have to mash it down and squeeze it and that's where I keep my bags the first thing you got to do is take your bags and get them flat so I stick my hand in there I'm looking for this little tab at the bottom you can work with a bag that doesn't have this tab but these are the easiest and there's different sizes, as you can see. This JC Penny bag is slightly smaller than the grocery store bag. And when I get them flat, here's my scissors. A good pair of scissors is really important for this. <laughs> Although I've used a knife, um, you can improvise anything. But I line up the bottoms. And I find I can do about three at a time to cut off the bottom. I hold them with my finger and my thumb like this. And I just cut across like so. I think because of the cooking show format, I'm developing a French accent. Ooh, is that what that was? And for this, just because I don't have anything better to do with it, and I'm always outside, so in case it's a windy area, the area, yeah, I stick it in my pocket. <laughs> so you need four bags to start. I just did three. That's how many I find that I can do easily at one time. Teresa actually found these flip-flops on the side of the road. It was hilarious. She jumped out of the van and picked them up right when she needed flip-flops. And, and look, hot mess. They've got my name on them. <laughs> <laughs> so ideally, these bags would all be the same size. I'm just going to go with, because this is what I do when I'm weaving. These two bags are different sizes. These bags are the same size. But remember, ideally, they'd be the same size. So I open them up. Because what you have here is a loop since you cut off the bottom. And I kind of roll it like that. I open up another one, kind of roll it like that, and I stack those two on top of each other. Now I take two more, and as I'm going to explain later, these could be any color. It depends on what pattern you want to do. And I roll that, and I roll that. Now, we used to cut the tops off, those uh, flaps on the top of the bag, the, the handles, handles. Mm -hmm. um, which is a different style. Maybe it's a little bit neater. I found that I like the loft, and it doesn't bother me having the handles on, so just to kind of streamline this, I don't cut the handles off anymore, I just do the bottom. So to get you started, you take, these are two bags, remember, I pull them through my other two bags. So in other words, I have this, two loops balanced on two loops. And then, my right hand here, I'm going to keep this open, I fold this over the two bags, and through the open part, like that. And then, I pull it tight. Just snug it up. Remember, these are plastic. It's gonna be really tough when I get done weaving because it all works together. But uh, to begin with, um, don't pull it as tight as you can. Just snug it up. And then what I do is I have bag here, bag here. I bring down another bag. And to start your weave, you have these three bags and one on top. It doesn't really matter. I find that, like, you know, if I really am not paying attention, it kind of will be less symmetrical, less smooth. So I kind of try to go with the knots where it feels kind of flat. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, again, that's not a deal breaker. And you can either start by going over or under. For some reason, I just like going under. I don't think it really matters. But once you start, it's like so many weaves, like under over, under, and I pull it kind of snug. And we have found, we were teaching kids this in summer camp, and we found that a really crucial thing, especially when you start, is to keep it flat. 
So it's good to do this on a table. And then pull it through. Over, under, over. Yep, so everything I just went under, now I went over. Everything I just went over, and now I'm under. It's the typical weave. So over, under, over, under, over, under. And it should be alternating on each strand. Now, you run out really quick, because these tend to be short. So I grab another bag, I just do an overhand knot, which is generally easy to untie. <laughs> really. Mm. So these are all pre-cut bags in there? Not all. I'm hoping I can grab one really quick. But this is, yeah. So sometimes when I'm not in the mood to weave and I just want to prep to give myself a head start on this, I'll just pre-cut all the bags except for the one they're in because, of course, if I cut the bottom off, it doesn't hold the rest of the bags. And then, like I just did, I can grab a pre-cut bag, make a quick loop, and this is just another version of what you did to begin with. Now, since the handles are there, this makes it a little bit trickier. So I ha have a loop. I can either just avoid the handle or try to incorporate the handle into my loop. Mm -hmm. um, that will make it a little bunchier when you incorporate the handle, but that's okay. I usually incorporate the handle like that. But either way, you can pull it through and then pull it through itself and then snug that up. And then, you know, I pull everything snug, tight. Um, Generally, like most skills, people tend to have things too loose, whether it's making cordage, or even baskets. So the tightness you'll kind of develop as you go. And then, once again, see I went over this. I'm going under, over, under. Now for the first row, depending on what I'm making, I can make that as long as I want. If I want a sleeping pad, which the first time I encountered this skill was the idea of giving it to homeless people so they have an insulated bed to sleep on. Mm -hmm. um, make it the length of your body. You know, keep holding it up. Is it long enough? And the reason why is because it's easier to go down making the length of it than to add rows going across to make the length of it. I suppose so. I mean, it would be just a different style to go across, like the width of your body and then to go down. But yeah, I would think just you know, one row and then less rows maybe psychologically is easier. Although it's the same amount of plastic bags, I would imagine. So that's basically what you do. You keep on going until you get it the length you want. I'll do one more row. I went under this one, so I know. And see, I've got this knot here, so I just kind of, it's a plastic bag. I can mold it. Push it over, under the one I just went over. And like so, and if you make a mistake, just unweave it. For the first row, it doesn't hold together very well, so it's good to have a clip or a clothespin if you stop and hold it like that. Yeah. So, let's move down the table. And the other thing is, you were talking about having it too loose or too tight. The kids were always making it too tight in the beginning, and it started to round up. Mm. Um, so, it, it helps to keep it flat and, like Gumby said, snug it up, but you don't have to pull it the tightest and make it into a bunchy mess either. Mm -hmm. And so, just like a cooking show, here's us a little further along. I've extended these. Um, you can make them long if you want to in the beginning. I find it's easier to work with because you have less to pull through to get in your way if you just keep them as short as possible and add as you go. But, you know, that's a stylistic thing, so you can go ahead and do this. For the sake of demonstration, I went ahead and made these long, and I want to show you how to add the next row. Um, this could be as long as I want it to be. I just made this super short because I need to show you the technique. I'm not actually trying to make something here. Um, but keep in mind, this, this row, this could be the end of a row as long as your body. It's the same thing you do. So, let's say I want to add a row over here. I will take my weaver. I went under, so I go over. I go under. And over. And then I make a braid. I do six. So in other words, I go, I'll take this right one, although you could start with the left. Again, it doesn't really matter. One, I cross it over. Two, I cross over that one. Three, I go to the right. Four, I go to the left. Five, I go to the right. Six, I go to the left. Now six is a really good number for this because 
I'm going to show you some different styles I'm using, but if you have like a color right in the middle, you've got three bags going down that you're weaving back and forth, it stays in the middle. Six will put the middle color, after all that braiding, back in the middle. It keeps mm -hmm. your, your pattern. And then I bend this braid over, and I can see that I went over this one, not under. So I'm going to go under the next one, just like I'm going to continue that pattern I've been doing. So I bend it over, it goes under, over, under. Now this is a little awkward. It's not complicated, it's just awkward. So take your time with this. If you get a little frustrated, you know, look at the video again, practice. It feels awkward, it still feels awkward to me, and I've been making a lot of mats. But then you just continue the pattern. I went under this one, so over, under, and again, here I am working with a knot again, but you'll see that when you get done, the knots really are not a big deal. <laughs> and then over. Now here's the thing you do with the new row. I came from right here, so I look for the next gap. See, this is across a weaver. This is one of my original three that are going straight down. Try to keep it so um, the, the light on these dark bags is kind of hard to see. There you go. Now I can see it. Okay. So this is where I'm coming from. Now I want to go back and connect to this first row. I go to the next part. Now it's often kind of a bigger gap than the rest of it when you go to the next part with this, but I find when it all comes together, and I'll show you in a minute, that doesn't really hurt anything. So since I went over this one, I go underneath this little loop, I pull it through, and I snug it up. He's linking his new row to the first row. Alright, and so now, just like before, I've got three, and I've got my weaver. And now it's connected to that first row. Pull it kind of tight. Not so tight it's all bunched up. I want this kind of flat because I'm making a mat. I'm making a two-dimensional thing. So I take my weaver, and since I went over this one, I go under, I go over, I go under. Now this is the point if I was teaching kids, I'd ask them, okay, so you tell me what to do next. <laughs> so as the watcher of this video, see if you're already thinking like, I know what to do next, because that's really going to help you own this knowledge rather than just feel like you're watching me and dependent on me. So since it's under here, I go over, I go under the middle one, I go over, and see how I am coming from here. This is where I last grabbed it. So I'm looking for, there's my little weaver. Here's my next loop. And th this takes a little bit of practice. You'll probably see it easier when you start doing it. And I come up and now it's time to add a new weaver in the way I showed you. I find the loop, cut the bottom off another bag, pull it through. Um, now you don't need the clip anymore. This is my favorite part. The, the first row is kind of annoying to me because it's like kind of, I don't know, awkward and I got to hold the clip. Right now it holds itself. So now I'm really rolling. So basically that is the whole thing. You can make something the size of a bed or bigger. Wall-to-wall -wall carpeting with plastic bags <laughs> with this technique. All that's left now, because when I get, come to the end here, same thing. Six twists of a braid pull it over back and forth back and forth back and forth mm -hmm. and you do it like do you continue to do it upside down until you get to the next part where you do the braid and turn it I alternate that depending on the size maybe depending on my mood I don't really know I'm not aware yeah. of any technique I'm doing it might just be something I'm unconscious of but so if, if you, you can find, kind of feel it once you start doing it if it's like you know like oh man this kind of feels awkward try turning yeah. it around that's seeing how if I that do helps. It. Try being on this side, oh, sometimes no. try being on that oh, side. Um, that would hurt my brain. Yeah, I don't really have one that is a favorite yet. It really mm -hmm. depends on a lot of factors for me. But for you, it might be different. But as long as you're doing that basic technique, see how it's all coming together. Doesn't look like anything spectacular yet, but keep in mind, this is just a super small example to show you the technique. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to make something here. All right, and now let's go here. Now to add to our extravaganza of color, I have added white and gray together. So, here is how you finish it off. I started, I made my row, 
I did my six braid thing and twisted it around so you can see, if you look carefully, one, two, three, there's the first row. One, two, three, here's the second row. And they're all linked in the way I showed you. Now let's say this is as big as I want to make it. I don't know what the hell this would be. Maybe it's a little bed for, actually one of the kids made a little bed for his, uh, what, pet tarant stuffed tarantula? Yes, it was a stuffed animal named Aurora. So this brought. is a pet for my little gerbil. A, uh, bed. a bed. A bed. <laughs> it's not a pet. It could be a pet. The gerbil is a pet. It's right. the best new toy, the plastic bag pet. <laughs> so now all you do is you fold it in. So you want to end it? Um, I kind of got myself in a corner here where this is a weird length. If I add another one, I've got a hell of a lot to fold back in. But if I don't, I've got a really short little part. So I'm choosing to go with the short part. Um, but that's really up to you, depending on the size. So with the short part, keep in mind with less plastic, it's just less of a grab. But since I'm folding all these in, which you'll see in a minute what I mean, it's going to hold together. So I just take this. This is my weaver. I've just gone over, under, over. So I come in, since I went over, from the underside, grab the last row, and now I go back in towards the mat. But since it's going sideways, I'm going to keep it going sideways. Although I guess you could go vertical. You literally yeah. just tuck the ends in. Yeah, I just tuck it in. So that went. I've still got a little bit. And pull that through. You might have even been able to like link it to one of the longer bags. Like maybe pull one of the longer bags through that little one. and, and Yeah, leave. let's keep it simple. <laughs> but that works for me. That's what I always do. And I think the stuff that I'm doing looks pretty nice. Uh, you can be the judge of that. I'll show you in a minute. But since this is going under, I'm going to go ahead and pull it over. I'm just using my finger to push it through. And then I look for the next gap. Um, I think it looks neater if you don't skip. I mean, I could go all the way up here, but I think it looks much neater if I take the time to just look for the holes and keep pushing them through. Pushing them through. And children, where is the next gap? Have you guessed? For those of you who said here, you are right. And that's <laughs> where I pull it through. And then the next gap here. And another good thing about this final part is it tightens everything up because you're filling in some of these loose spaces. And go through here. And again, it's not, not really, especially this part is not um, super specific of how you do it. It's just you're tucking it in anywhere, basically. It's so like you, the bottom of a shoe. So of all the parts of this that I'm showing you, if this part confuses you, just like try it you know try tucking it in anywhere and see what you like if, if you like the way it looks it's good enough um let's see as i'm tucking these last parts in one of the things i love about this upcycling plastic bag project is uh we actually talk about upcycling being preferable to recycling it turns out less than one percent of plastic bags actually get recycled so when i'm taking them out of the recycling center we've actually caught employees throwing these in the dumpster before um when I turn this into something else, I am not feeding all this trash going into the dump. Um, I guess you can wash it off. Sometimes I've had, rarely had these plastic bags be smelly, but most of the time, you know, they're just, they're plastic bags sitting in there. It's not like trash. Um, and because I'm making something, it's kind of a dual purpose that's good for the environment. I'm saving these plastic bags from winding up in a landfill. And look how nicely that's coming along. Look how nicely we have a plastic bag, Matt. And I'm also making something that I now don't have to buy. And I'm developing a skill, because once you learn how to do this, I'm about to show you all kinds of things I've done with this, this plastic bag uh, technique. But I don't have to go and buy a little bed for my pet tarantula. <laughs> now, <laughs> I have helped the environment. I have made something that I'm really invested in because it's mine. And... These are plastic bags that are not being thrown in a landfill, buried in the ground and just ignored. Now it's turned into something useful. I have upcycled it. And please, please, when you get plastic bags, don't go to the store and ask them, can I get like some of the plastic bags that are new, you know? You get the ones that are already on their way to either being thrown out or quote unquote recycled. And um, don't, please also don't drive all around off of your route 
to get them because then you're adding to the pollution of the earth. And yeah, you might get some funny looks as you're rummaging through the recycling bin. I kind of get a kick out of that myself. But if you actually do this, like sit at a place like a coffee shop or something and weave, you're going to get in a lot of interesting conversations with a lot of interesting people because <laughs> this is an interesting thing to be doing. So that's how you finish it off. Now this technique, even though I just made, you know, what, the bottom of a flip-flop for a strangely shaped person. Mm -hmm. Ooh, actually, yeah. I might try that. That's that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, but this technique can be used to make a lot of projects. And Teresa, if we will come over here for this plethora, this celebration of color, I Hopefully would recommend... the battery's still holding in there. Huh? <laughs> Hopefully the battery's still holding in there. I would recommend this as a first project. I use this as a meditation pad. It could be a dog bed. Um, God, what else was I thinking this could be? A rug, a little rug. Mm -hmm. But basically, I was very mindful of the colors on this, and it's like a nice thing that you can reach the end and feel like, all right, I've accomplished something. Um, and I think what I did was this was all gray bags, except for my weaver that goes back and forth, all blue bags. Interestingly, we're in Minnesota right now, but we're from North Carolina. Blue bags are everywhere in North Carolina. Food line. Turns out they're not everywhere, um, <laughs> like in New England. So this project actually took me a long time to finish, waiting for me to run into blue bags again. Thank you, Giant Eagle. The only <laughs> other project I have finished so far, other than this, to go with my meditation pad is my meditation pillow. This took a little more imagination. I made it big enough to fold over. So I made this like twice as big, folded it over, and as I did the last row, instead of just connecting it to the row before it, I also connected it to the row after it closed in the gap. I know that was a little abstract, but these techniques, just use your imagination, experiment a little bit, you can go all kinds of ways. And I filled this, I might be able to open this up a little bit, with white plastic bags, because I was finding the most of them. So this is a gray plastic bag pillow, filled with white plastic bags, and this is a hugely comfortable Zafu and Zabuton. Um, I try to meditate at the end of every day to kind of wind down, and man, Oh, even just sitting here, I'm like developing a, a relationship with this where sitting here it like tells my mind like relax. It's like happy time. <laughs> All right, so these are the two projects I've finished. You gave your big mat away. I gave a big mat away at camp uh, to some girls that were really helpful to us for the week. Um, that was a sleeping pad. This is going to be a sleeping bag. Um, I'm waiting to run into the right colors to finish it, but it's gray bags. Um, with a brown one in the middle, so that the weaver is gray, the two on the outside are gray, just the middle strand is brown. When I get that row the length of my body, I'm going to twist it around, and the next row will be white with a blue in the middle, and I'm going to keep repeating that. Um, and eventually I'm going to fold that on itself, sort of like the pillow, until I have a sleeping bag, a closed plastic bag mat that I can slide right into. I'm excited to finish this one. And I guess this will go here next. This is going to be a blanket. This is the length of my body. So I'll be able to wrap up in this. I'm going to make it very wide so we can have a picnic on it. We could cover up with it. And yet another pattern. I made my whole row, weaver and everything, white. As I took it to the next row, yellow, gray, blue, now I'm looking for pink, <laughs> and uh, pink is kind of hard to run into, so this project is sort of on standby right now. You can see I'm kind of cheating a little bit. If it's close to pink, I'm, do I'm using it. So here's my blanket, and this is going to be a really beautiful, colorful blanket. This is probably the most complicated thing I'm working on at the moment. This is going to be a backpack. And this is a skill that's going to go a little beyond what I just showed you because I'm going to need to do this thing called a pleat braid to make the backpack straps. But I'm going to try to keep the whole thing this pattern, which is all brown bags with the middle uh, one going down, not the weaver, white. So that's what you're looking at here. And what I did here is as I came down on this last strand, I grabbed the bottom. So I'm going to keep coming up. I'm going to make a few more rows and keep grabbing the bottom. So I'm going to eventually close in something that has some depth. It's going to be a backpack. And have this extra that's going to be the top. It looks like it might turn out to be a little big. Mm -hmm. It's my first one. I'll see and I'll learn. But it's going to be really cool. I'm sure I'll find some use for it. 
And finally, what I found that I like to do, since we're living in a van and we're traveling around, and like I said, I can't run into the colors I want to all the time, but I, I get addicted to a skill, so I want to learn, I want to keep weaving. I'm making a poncho. And this is my totally random colorful poncho because when I have random stuff and I want to weave and I can't work on any of my patterns, I can work on this. And my only rule I have for this one that I just decided arbitrarily is my rule is I will never attach a color to itself. I want it to be as random and colorful. I've got purple, I've got orange, I've got bags that I, I don't run into very often. And this, I'm going to keep on going until I have a poncho that about starts here, comes up here, and I'm gonna have to kind of use my imagination to figure out how to make a side, make a hole for my head, and come down the back, but <laughs> I see a lot of uh, potential in this. This is gonna be really colorful and unique. So, yeah, plastic bag mats. Um, if you have any questions, please contact us. I'll be glad to uh, try to help you out. Is there anything you wanna add, Teresa? Uh, no, I think that's it. Yeah, and these are so comfortable. I mean, like I said, you can use this as a rug. Oh man, it's just really insulated and nice. And I mentioned using this as a dog bed. Imagine making this bigger. <laughs> that would be a really plush dog bed. Mm -hmm. So, happy plastic bag weaving.